Have you or a loved one ever gone into a Chinese restaurant and asked for no MSG even though you aren't allergic? If yes, then you may be a racist. Let me ask a follow-up question. Have you ever gone to a French restaurant and asked for no MSG? If yes, then maybe you're just based. If no, and you still don't get the picture, here's a third question. Have you ever eaten at a KFC? Hi, honey. If you follow me online, you may know me as the guy that tries to make fictional food. Not quite chef son. Let's start at the beginning. MSG stands for monosodium glutamate. It is the sodium salt of glutamic acid. Glutamic acid was first identified in 1966 by a German chemist who treated wheat gluten, hence the name. In 1907, Professor Kikunai Ikeda of Tokyo Imperial Uni, while eating a bowl of boiled tofu in kombu dashi, became convinced that there was another basic taste. He began analyzing the composition and in 1908, Dr. Kikunai Ikeda was able to extract and crystallize glutamic acid from seaweed broth. Nowadays, it's made by fermenting starch, sugar beets, sugar cane, molasses, or corn. You may have also noticed that this is the origin of the word umami, the fifth taste. Why does MSG have such a bad rep, whereas umami is the opposite when they're basically the exact same thing? Which it shouldn't have a bad rep because MSG isn't even bad. It is naturally occurring. Ripe tomatoes, parmesan cheese, rofer cheese, gouda cheese, cheddar cheese, emmental cheese, kelp, seaweed, dried shiitake mushrooms, shimeji mushrooms, potatoes, grape juice, corn, peas, miso, green tea, sardines, scallops, squid, clams, oysters, anchovies. If you've ever eaten food, you've eaten glutamate. They're practically in every culture's favorite seasoning and dishes. Bonito flakes, maggi, fish sauce, yeast extract, as in Vegemite, Marmite, ketchup, seasoned salt, sazon, oyster sauce, mayonnaise, barbecue sauce, mustard, salad dressing, asparagus, soy sauce, kimchi, cured ham, broccoli, cabbage, spinach, onion, crab, mackerel, salmon, chicken, beef, shrimp, Doritos, Campbell's chicken noodle soup, frozen pizzas, hot dogs, Popeyes, Cheetos, Pringles, bistro gravy, chicken broth, grapes, everything at Chick-fil-A. If you've eaten protein, you probably eat 13,000 milligrams of glutamate each day, with added MSG at probably 550 milligrams. If you were breastfed as a baby, 800 milliliters of human breast milk a day is 180 milligrams of glutamate. That's 10 times higher in glutamic acid than cow's milk. Hell, if you were born, glutamic acid is naturally present in us. The body itself creates glutamine. It is vital for your immune system. Now, there may be an argument that naturally occurring versus this bag of suspicious white crystals is completely different. And you may be right. Hi. Some naturally occurring is only glutamate. However, our bodies cannot distinguish the difference. Our bodies treat them all the same. Which brings me to my next point. If someone is truly allergic, then they wouldn't be able to eat any glutamate containing thing. Any and all the things I listed prior should give the same symptoms. That means Italian cuisine is entirely off the menu. And I say if because being allergic to MSG isn't even possible. No antibodies or overreactions were ever observed with MSG. It's more likely that you're allergic to foods that contain MSG, not the MSG itself. It's a placebo or nocebo effect, usually. The closest thing to an allergy is MSG sensitivity. For MSG sensitive folk, consuming more than 3000 milligrams without any food might give mild symptoms, such as headache, numbness, tingling, palpitations, drowsiness. Who does that? Who eats it straight from the bag with nothing else? That's just not something that happens. I don't think the issue with that was MSG. If you do that, that's a you problem. If you actually experience symptoms, ask your doctor and drink more water. You're probably just dehydrated. MSG contains salt. MSG is less toxic than salt. Table salt contains 40% salt, 
whereas MSG contains 13% salt. For adults, the FDA recommends eating less than 2300 milligrams of salt a day. So using MSG is a good way to cut your sodium intake, making it healthier and just as tasty if not better. Wait a minute, it was salt. It was salt all along. All the symptoms, even the start of this whole MSG mess was a letter from a guy who may or may not exist saying northern Chinese food was especially bad because of the high sodium content. But we instead chose to focus on the MSG. We have vilified the wrong sodium. MSG could have been the one saving grace if we replaced table salt with MSG. But instead we chose to replace MSG with salt. What have we done?